Time now for another Indy 500 tradition. We send it back to Dave Calabro for the introduction of the one and only Jim Neighbors. Race fans, please turn your attention to the video boards and the victory podium. Since first appearing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1972, this gentleman has become a cherished icon on race day. He has treasured every moment being with you race fans here at the track and with those millions watching around the world. The words of this special song always strike a chord with all of us. And it never sounded sweeter when sung by this Hoosier at heart for the 36th and final time performing back home again in Indiana. Please welcome and sing along with the one, the only, our good friend, Mr. Jim Neighbors. Back home again. It seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight still burning bright through the sycamores for me. The new moon sends out its fragrance through the field. The moonlight on the Wabash How I long for my Indiana home well, Let's give it up, race fans, for one last time. Thank you, Jim, for coming back home one last time. We love you, we'll miss you, and we'll never forget you as the balloons fly over the world-famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway, a tradition that dates back to 1947. Back home again in Indiana, indeed. I'm not sure how many of you are necessarily race fans, 8th graders, but I'm sure that living in this state all of you have at least heard of the Indianapolis 500. And Jim Neighbors, though he's not originally from Indiana, became famous for singing that song every year for over three decades. In fact, that song has become so associated with the state of Indiana that most people think that it's our state song. It's not, although it sounds an awful lot like it. But it was written by a man from Rensselaer, Indiana, a man by the name of James Haney. And you know what? It's fitting that a song about Indiana has become part of a sporting event that is associated with the state so strongly. It's not the only time that music has been associated with sports and coming from Indiana, though. How many of you enjoy a good baseball game? I bet you recognize this. On to the bottom of the seventh, the Cubs are leading, four to three. All right, let me hear you. I, Gary Presley, the last time at home this year. Everybody, a one, a two, a three.
any baseball fan where their salt knows the seventh inning stretch and take me out to the ball game. But other than the fact that Harry Carey and the Chicago Cubs there had it, and it's so close to where we live, what would be the Indiana connection there? Well, the song was actually written by a set of brothers who were music publishers in the early 20th century, the Von Tiltzer brothers. And they're from, you guessed it, Indiana. There's all kinds of different musicians from all over this state that have played a part in shaping our modern music. Recently, Indiana celebrated a bicentennial, 200 years as a state. 200 years is a good amount of time to cover modern music history, isn't it? So, we're going to look through things a little bit here and see what musicians you might actually recognize. And guess what? They're in all different types of genres, all different types of music. I happen to highlight a couple here real quick that were connected with sports because of association with their songs, and they were from the early ragtime era in the early 1900s that they were working and composing things. But there's people that are famous today that are still working now that happen to call this state home. Let's take a look at some of the people that you might recognize. There are a number of rock musicians from Indiana, including Jim Petrick of Survivor fame, who wrote Eye of the Tiger, or John Cougar Mellencamp, or if you prefer things to be a little bit more metal in taste, Axl Rose hails from Lafayette, Indiana, and of course we have Michael Jackson, who is from our own Gary, Indiana. Back to the 1930s and 40s, when jazz was the popular medium for music, you can find Hoagie Carmichael, the writer of Stardust, one of the most popular songs ever recorded. Cole Porter, a popular Broadway artist. J.J. Johnson, one of the most significant slide trombone performers on the face of the planet, hailed from Indianapolis, and transitioning from jazz to rock, Wes Montgomery, considered one of the greatest guitarists to have ever lived. While country music has Nashville, Tennessee, and Motown calls Detroit its home, the small town of Anderson, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis, is considered by many the gospel capital of America. It is the hometown of Bill and Gloria Gaither, and their hometown downtown revival, the Gaither Homecoming Revival television show, which has given many religious artists their start. Anderson is also the recording home for Sandy Patty who is a multiple Dove Award-winning artist. The Dove is the religious equivalent to the Grammy Award. Indiana also is home to Ray Bolts, who hails originally from Muncie, Indiana, and wrote many Dove and Grammy Award-winning songs, including See the Lamb and Thank You. That's just a small sampling, and mostly focusing on performers. But there were also people who wrote music, composers from Indiana. Some of those performers were also composers, but there are many, many others. And I think that it's probably a good thing to do to expand your knowledge on different genres of music and the different performers that are out there by exploring a little bit of the things that you might have in common with some of them, including the commonality of being from Indiana. So, here's what I would like you to do. I have put together a guideline for you. You are going to be researching a musician from Indiana. Everybody will be picking a different musician, okay? 
you're putting together a basic slideshow to teach everybody, tell us a little bit about your person and why they are significant to music history. Then we will share these. You will get a chance to look at them as well as me. You're teaching each other. And you'll make comments about what's similar between some of these artists and the person that you investigated yourself. Now, I will warn you, I expect everybody to do a different person because if I didn't do that, I know that half of you would be picking somebody in the Jackson family. I want you to pick somebody that you might not necessarily already know about. I'm giving you a document that lists several people from Indiana. Choose somebody that's on that list. If you don't like the people that are on that list, see if you can find somebody on your own. But before you do all the ongoing research with it, send me a quick email or contact me somehow so I can double check. Yes, I believe that person is an important enough person that we can pay attention to them. I don't want somebody doing research on, um, well, as cool as it would be to say, hey, I know a musician who performs down the street at so-and-so's place. I want to make sure that it's somebody who has made some sort of impact that people outside of our neighborhood would recognize them. Somebody who has an extended recording contract or has published works of music. Not to shortchange people's participation in music on a local level, but I want it to be somebody who's a mover and shaker in the music world. A, it'll be easier for you to find information, and B, it'll be more interesting to make a connection between things. So, let's see if we can discover together a little bit more about Hoosier music history. Looking forward to seeing who you decide that you're going to profile and seeing what you come up with. Have a good week.